Excuse me. <clears throat> Seems to me that what you folks need is a hero. Some Disney sequels are as good, if not better, than the originals. Other Disney sequels, on the other hand, never actually made their way to our screens. Let's talk about the ones that got away. Sequels, we mean. Number 1. We all love The Nightmare Before Christmas, but it never managed to get a sequel. Terrible news, folks! Who wouldn't want to see the future of Jack Skellington? Well, that's a bit complicated. Both Disney and the Holiday Classics director Henry Selleck were interested in making a sequel. Okay, so we're all on board, when can we get tickets? Well, there's one small, actually pretty huge catch. Disney would only make the sequel if it was CG, as they didn't think stop-motion movies were the best idea. Come on, a Nightmare Before Christmas sequel just has to be stop-motion, right? Well, Tim Burton agrees with this notion. In fact, he's not sure any sequel would be a good idea. But what does it mean? Burton has said that he doesn't see The Nightmare Before Christmas as a mass-market type of movie and wants to maintain its purity. But you're the Pumpkin King! Not anymore! Number 2. Hercules the Trojan War almost told us the story of Hercules and Meg in Wedded Bliss amidst the Trojan War, but we'll forget this part. The 90s kids in the room remember the boom of direct-to-video sequels. Yes, it was a very different time. Well, in the late 90s, Hercules the Trojan War was proposed. It would follow Hercules, Meg, and their daughter Hebe as the family attempted to rescue Helen from Paris of Troy and consequently stop the Trojan War. Pretty weird stuff, but we can't say we aren't intrigued. When John Lasseter became the CEO of Disney, though, he put a stop to all direct-to-video sequels. This is going to be important to remember for a lot of this video. Yeah, I know you know. This move made Hercules the only film of the Disney Renaissance period that doesn't have a sequel. Let's see, what could be behind curtain number one? Man. Number three, Pinocchio 2 failed to exist for a similar reason. My nose! What's happened? It was also planned until the direct-to-video sequels were no longer being made. Before it was cancelled, though, Pinocchio 2 was meant to be about Pinocchio discovering more about what it meant to be a real boy and learning lots of life lessons. Whatever the plot of Pinocchio 2 would have been about, we have a feeling many people would have liked it more than they liked the live-action remake. Just saying. Oh. Number 4. Monsters, Inc. 2 Lost in Scaradice was almost a continuation of Monsters, Inc. The sequel was set to follow Mike and Sully when, in their attempt to find Boo, they get lost in the human world. This idea sounds pretty great, and in fact, a script was written. So what happened? Well, Monsters, Inc. 2 was created by a company called Circle 7 Animation, a division of Disney that was established when Disney and Pixar split. Its sole focus was to make sequels to Disney Pixar movies, and Monsters, Inc. 2 was second on the docket after Toy Story 3. When Disney and Pixar made amends, though, Circle 7 animation was shut down and Monsters, Inc. 2 Lost in Scaradice went with it. We think they should really consider making this one happen, though. Now put that thing back where it came from, or so help me! Number 5. Bambi's children almost gave us another generation of Bambi. Literally. Bambi was based on a German novel, and this novel has a sequel called Bambi's Children. The book followed Bambi and Feline's children, twins Gino and Gary. There was talk of Bambi's children being turned into a movie, but as famous as Bambi is, it actually didn't do too well in the box office, so that sequel was scrapped. Still, since Bambi has become so beloved, a different sequel was made many years later. Bambi 2 went straight to video in 2006 and followed Bambi growing up with his dad. Number 6. Dumbo was another beloved character who almost got his story continued. In 2001, a sneak peek was released for Dumbo 2, a movie about Dumbo and fellow circus animals getting lost in the big city. Once again, though, John Lasseter's shutdown of straight-to-video sequels prevented Dumbo 2 from making it to our screens. Luckily, though, the storyboards are out there so we can get a taste of what could have been. Number 7. The Aristocats 2 was very close to being made. In fact, it was cancelled in 2007, just a year before it was set to premiere. The Aristocats 2 was about the beloved cat family from the original capturing a jewel thief, so apparently things are gonna get crazy in this sequel. The Aristocats 2 was lost along with the other could've been direct-to-video sequels, but the storyboards are fun to see nonetheless. Number 8. Fantasia almost got a very unique sequel. That's fitting for a very unique movie, we suppose. There was an idea in the works that would have re-released Fantasia every year, each year with new animated sequences. This was scrapped, and in the 80s an entirely new idea was formed. This one would have been called Musicana. Once again, though, this one didn't come to fruition. Fantasia 2000, of course, was successfully made, but the next installment, Fantasia 2006, didn't make it. We feel like we're due for another one by now, though, right? Number 9. The famous question, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, was almost asked a second time. 
Who Framed Roger Rabbit was the most expensive movie of its time, but it also made a lot of money and was great for Disney in many ways. A sequel seems natural then, right? This sequel was actually said to be a prequel about Roger Rabbit finding out that he was, in fact, a cartoon. But I'm a toon. Toons are supposed to make people live. Sit down! Roger Rabbit is owned by both Disney and Steven Spielberg, though, which created some drama. Twelve short films were planned to be shown before Spielberg and Disney movies, between the first Roger Rabbit and its sequel to keep Roger Rabbit popular in the interim. Yet disagreements about whether certain shorts would be shown before Spielberg films or Disney films became a point of contention, as did the short scripts. Thus, most of the shorts and the sequel were scrapped. Number 10. Chicken Little almost got a sequel called The Ugly Duckling Story. Chicken Little 2 was said to revolve around a love triangle between Chicken Little, Raffaella, and Chicken Little's childhood sweetheart. In the end, though, Disney didn't think that the original movie had enough fans to warrant a sequel. I'd like to see the movie they make about you now. Number 11. Treasure Planet 2 was actually in the works before the original Treasure Planet ever came out. When Treasure Planet wasn't particularly popular, though, plans for a sequel were scrapped. Hmm. Fascinating. Number 12. Atlantis 2 was set to be titled Let's Get Milo and would be set in the 1950s. Spin-offs of Atlantis have subsequently been made, but once again, since Atlantis wasn't too popular, the sequel never came to fruition. I would have told you sooner, but it was strictly on a need-to-know basis. Number 13. Snow White Returns was close to giving us more Snow White. I'm Snow White. Snow White! The princess? Snow White Returns was meant to be a compilation of deleted scenes from the original film. Ultimately, the idea was scrapped, but the deleted scenes were included in the Snow White Diamond Edition DVD. Number 14. Mulan 3 was almost a reality, but let's be real, have you ever seen Mulan 2? Mulan 2 was a direct-to-video sequel about Mulan and General Shang's wedding. The third film would have featured Mulan helping another woman follow in her footsteps and save her imprisoned father. Mulan 3 was cancelled because, as we have learned, no more direct-to-video sequels. No one will listen. Huh? Well, I'm sorry, did you say something? Mushu. Number 15. Aladdin 4 never came to be for a surprising and rather dark reason. Aladdin spawned two sequels, The Return of Jafar and Aladdin and the King of Thieves. Of course, Genie is one of the most important parts of Aladdin. Me? When his voice actor Robin Williams passed away, plans for Aladdin 4 came to a pause. Disney wanted to use recordings of Williams from the original Aladdin movie. In Williams' will, however, it's said that any of his unused material can't be used until 25 years after his passing. Consequently, the Aladdin franchise came to a close. Thank you. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Would you watch these sequels? Which one would you most like to see them make? All right, Dopey. It says right here that you talk in our new movie. See? You got all the best lines. You're gonna wish these Disney movies didn't get cancelled. Ready to hear about the ones that got away? Let's go! Number 1. We almost got a Disney made Where the Wild Things Are. In fact, in 1983, John Lasseter directed a 30-second film test of the Maurice Sendak classic. In 2001, Universal got the rights to the story, but you can still see some of the screen tests today. Number 2. If you wish you were off to see The Wizard again, The Rainbow Road to Oz almost gave us that chance. You may remember when Disney's Oz the Great and Powerful came out in 2013, but did you know that the movie had been in the works since the 30s? Before Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs premiered, Walt Disney was looking to adapt several popular children's books for the big screen. He made this happen with a few, like Peter Pan and Alice in Wonderland, but when it came to The Wizard of Oz, he couldn't make it work. His instincts that it would make a popular movie were, of course, correct. In 1937, MGM bought the rights to the story, but Disney was eventually able to buy the rights to some of the other books in the Oz series. A live-action movie, The Rainbow Road to Oz, was in the works starring Annette Funicello. A preview for The Rainbow Road to Oz was even shown on television, but the movie never actually came to fruition. Why? No one really knows. But it's believed that at the time Walt Disney was a bit preoccupied with a few little side projects. Suffering cats, I've got just time enough to do the trailer for next week's show. AKA Sleeping Beauty and Disneyland. Number 3. Newt is the only cancelled movie Pixar has ever had. And seeing how popular Pixar's projects are, it definitely piques our interest about Newt. Newt was set to premiere in 2012, and according to Disney, it was about the last remaining male and female blue-footed Newts on the planet, Newt and Brooke. Pete Docter, the director of Up, was approached for the project, and he agreed but apparently said that he actually had an even better idea. The idea in question? A little something called Inside Out. So he was right, he did have a pretty good idea. Still, we're not sure that was a good reason to scrap Newt altogether. Number 4. 
Yes, we know the Gremlins movie already exists, but the Disney version was going to be very different. Instead, this version was going to be based on the Roald Dahl book, The Gremlins. There were multiple screenplays written for this movie in the early 1940s. In the end, the idea was abandoned. But if you love the idea of the OG Gremlins movie, there are original copies of a promotional book that was made for the movie out there. Number 5. We all know Swan Lake, but most of us don't know that it was almost a Disney movie. In 1992, Jeffrey Katzenberg announced several movies that would be developed for Disney. Sinbad the Sailor, Homer's Odyssey, and Pocahontas. When they couldn't come to an agreement with former Disney animator director Richard Rich, he went and made the Swan Princess with his own animation studio. Number 6. We all live in a yellow submarine. Yes, we're talking about the Disney version. The Robert Zemeckis remake of the animated film didn't end up happening, but we have to say, the idea of the Beatles classic being made into a Disney movie does sound pretty cool. Number 7. The Seven Dwarves. You know them, you love them, and they almost got their own movie. The Seven Dwarves was actually a prequel from Disney Toon Studios that would have explained how the Seven Dwarves met each other. In 06, however, the project was cancelled by John Lasseter. Number 8. The Three Little Pigs is a popular retelling of the classic fairy tale The Three Pigs by David Weisner. In 2002, Disney Feature Animation optioned the children's book. The following year, Disney announced that the movie was said to be a combination of computer and traditional animation. Why the movie was ultimately cancelled is unclear. Number 9. Don Quixote was almost made into a Disney movie. Many, many times. In 1940, the classic story was nearly made into a Fantasia-like movie. It was put on pause until 1946, at which point it was considered as a short film that would be part of something bigger. Then it was put on pause again until 1951. No surprise, it was then put on pause again, this time for a whopping 60 years. Then in 2012, it was announced that Johnny Depp would produce a modern reimagining of the story. It was, no surprise, put on pause, and in 2016, it was said that Disney was moving forward with the project without Depp. It's been more than 80 years, and we still haven't seen Disney's Don Quixote. But after an origin story like this, we want to see this movie just on principle. Number 10. Uncle Stiltskin In 2003, Disney bought the rights to this story, which follows Uncle Stiltskin as he attempts to lure in a child by spinning straw into gold. He ends up luring in an orphan who was raised by wolves. Pretty bizarre premise, and we can't say we're not intrigued. It seems, however, that the movie fell to the wayside in favor of now classics Tangled and Princess and the Frog. Number 11. Morgan's Ghost would have followed some classic characters in a new story. The movie, which was in production between 1939 and 1941, followed Mickey, Donald Duck, and Goofy as they ran an inn when late one night a parrot pirate named Yellowbeak came in. The movie never actually came to fruition, but it was ultimately revamped, and in 1942 the storyboards were made into a comic book called Donald Duck Finds Pirate Gold. Number 12. Calling all the Nightmare Before Christmas fans, you're gonna want to hear about The Shadow King. Director Henry Selleck is behind some of our quirky stop-motion favorites like The Nightmare Before Christmas, James and the Giant Peach, and Coraline. The Shadow King definitely would have fit in with these other movies. It followed Hap, a young orphan who meets a shadow girl who teaches him how to make shadow puppets that actually come to life. Sounds pretty cool, but Disney pulled the plug on The Shadow King ahead of its planned 2013 release when the movie was behind on its production goals. Number 13. If you love Disney movies that are based on fairy tales, you would have loved Tom Lin. Tom Lin is considered Scotland's first fairy tale, and it was at one time going to be a Disney classic. The fairy tale is about a man named Tom Lin, whose true love saves him from the evil queen of the fairies. Writer and director of Aladdin and The Lion King, Roger Allers, was behind the project, but allegedly some drama with Disney was the movie's downfall. Number 14. Frady Cat would have been about, well, a Frady Cat. This movie, which Disney Animation directors Ron Clements and John Musker started working on in 2004, was referred to as a cartoon film noir thriller, which, we'll admit, sounds interesting. It was intended to be an Alfred Hitchcock satire, which follows a scaredy cat as he was pulled from the comforts of his couch and falsely accused of a crime. In 2005, the project was canceled. Number 15. Wildlife was said to be Disney's first entirely CG animated non-Pixar film. An adaptation of George Bernard Shaw's Pygmalion, the movie was set in a nightclub following the singer Kitty Glitter. When the movie was canceled, though, Chicken Little became the first CG non-Pixar movie. Number 16. Besides being a great title, A Few Good Ghosts was almost a one-half CGI, one-half traditionally animated Disney movie. This movie was about three children and a ghost on their quest to unite an Appalachian couple. 
Don't worry, we don't really understand this plot either. And we probably never will, considering that in 2003 the project was cancelled. The then-president of animation, David Staten, said despite the best efforts of the crew, the fundamental idea was not working. Sounds like they didn't get what it was about either. Number 17. Catfish Bend was based on the book series of the same name by Ben Lucian Berman. The first book is about a group of animals taking over a Mississippi flood control problem from humans. Disney got the rights to the book, but they ended up ditching the project. Number 18. In another case of novel-turned-Disney movie-turned-canceled Disney movie, we have Mort. This film was based on Terry Pratchett's fantasy novel, which follows death. Yes, death. Death takes in a young boy named Mort and teaches him how to collect souls. In 2010, the movie was allegedly in development, and in 2016, concept art was made public. The project didn't make it, though. Number 19. Not to be confused with Princess and the Frog, it's The Prince and the Pig. The movie was about a little boy and his pet pig as they attempted to steal the moon. In 2003, they got the rights from Rian Johnson, but ultimately scrapped the idea. Number 20. Chanticleer would have been based on a story about a rooster who thinks his crow causes the sun to rise. The story was written by Edmund Rostand, the author of Cyrano de Bergerac. Never saw the light of day, though. Crow or no crow. For every movie we see on the big screen, there's usually a slew of failures that never made it past production. Number 1. If you were a kid in the 90s, you'll recognize our first failed sequel on this list. You might even recognize a familiar set of cave people. But now we're getting ahead of ourselves. Ants 2 was going to be a sequel to the 1998 classic Ants. You know, the bug movie you watched and thought it was just a little too close to a bug's life? Yeah, that one. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Well, maybe, and... That's one of the reasons it was cancelled, actually. DreamWorks closing its TV animation unit mixed with worries that the original Ants was too close a ripoff to a bug's life made the sequel tank before it took off. And it's a good thing, because allegations against the movie's main voice actor Woody Allen wouldn't have helped its success. Number 2. For fans of the original B-movie, this sequel would have been a dream. But it was never even announced to the production company. During a Reddit Q&A session in 2016, Jerry Seinfeld was asked if he'd consider making a sequel as Barry the Bee. He responded that he had thought about it pretty briefly, and even though he recognized the fans' energy behind the idea, he feared it would make the original less iconic. And so we never got to see how a relationship between a human woman and a bee would have worked out. Number 3. This failed sequel might not surprise you. As Road to El Dorado was in the works in 2000, there was already a plan for a sequel. Fans of the movie can say the movie's attempt at a good old-fashioned search for gold could have been, well, golden as a plot premise. But after the first movie bombed at the box office and made DreamWorks lose millions, the sequel was scrapped before production began. Three. Excuse us. Okay. Number 4. This story about a herd of elephants meeting all sorts of danger while traveling across Asia would have been DreamWorks' third computer-animated project after Ants and Shrek. It was announced in 1998, but never made it to production because the development of Shrek as a series of movies and Madagascar's debut production took first priority for DreamWorks. It's a shame because Morgan Freeman was set to voice the main character in Tusker. Morgan Freeman as an elephant? Just sounds like it would have worked. Number 5. We imagine Boo was going to be a mix of Men in Black and Ghostbusters in an animated version. But we'll never know because this movie never got released. It was about ghosts joining an afterlife counter-haunting unit set to release in 2015. It could have had a solid chance given the all-star voice cast, including Bill Murray, Seth Rogen, and Jennifer Coolidge. In the end, the movie release was delayed to avoid competing with the release of Inside Out. As far as we know, there's been no news of Boo since 2018. That's what I do now. I'm a boo cadet. Number 6. This one you might recognize from a movie that was actually made later on. In 2005, DreamWorks had a stop-motion animation project in the works with Ardman Animation called Crude Awakening. It was going to be an adaptation of a book called The Twits, set in prehistoric times. Sound familiar? Yeah, DreamWorks and Ardman Animation both made their own version after the first was cancelled. DreamWorks made The Crudes, and Ardman Animation made Early Man. So I guess the idea wasn't entirely scrapped. Number 7. If you've never heard of a bilby, which is a rabbit-like animal from Australia, you're probably not alone. This musical comedy about a little bilby coming out from its hole for the first time in Australia was cancelled in 2017 when DreamWorks merged with Universal. The character assets did see the light of day, though, when they were used in a 2018 short film on Vimeo. Number 8. 
American Dog was going to be an offbeat movie about a dog actor on a road trip. Until it wasn't. Chris Sanders, known for his role in directing Lilo and Stitch, had disagreements with the production company and the film was cancelled. You're crazy. <laughs> Oddly enough, though, the movie was essentially morphed into the idea for Bolt, which came out in 2008. Danger at every turn. I eat danger for breakfast. You hungry? Starving. Number 9. In 2010, DreamWorks had a movie in the works that focused on the fact that all of us have a shadow. Seems likable enough, you'd think? The movie Me and My Shadow never made it past the production phase. Because of too many changes in directors and delayed release dates, the progress of this film fizzled out and it never became anything. The fan base, however, grew impressively, even without a finished product. Oh, this is it, buddy! It's finally happening! He's changing my life! I mean his life! He's gonna go skydiving! Number 10. When Big Idea Animation Studios released Jonah a VeggieTales movie, they had the idea to make the Bob and Larry movie, which was supposed to be released in 2005. But unfortunately, the idea was rejected officially in 2003 for a pretty brutal reason. Big Idea went bankrupt. We later got another similar tale in The Pirates Who Don't Do Anything, a VeggieTales movie. Number 11. Farm animals in an underground punk band? We could go for that. DreamWorks had the rights for a movie adaptation of the book of the same name in 2006. The same director that gave us The Simpsons movie and Monsters, Inc. was set to lead the project, but it never became anything. Where's the kid? Kid? <laughs> what kid? The latest whispers about it came out in 2020, and it seems the movie is stuck somewhere in the lengthy production process. Whether it's for technical, legal, or other reasons, we're just not sure. Number 12. In 1998, DreamWorks started developing a movie that would have probably turned a few heads. Rockumentary was said to be a mockumentary of the Beatles' rise to fame. Except, oh yeah, the characters were going to be an animated penguin rock band. The idea was scrapped at the time, but when Madagascar Productions began, the idea was brought back in the form of a penguin tactical unit instead of a band. This was the idea behind the characters that gave us a reference we'll use to We're Old and Grey. Just smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave. Number 13. This movie about tiny people trying to challenge society's beliefs was in the works as an adaptation of the Terry Pratchett book of the same name. The production process was in and out between 2001 and 2011, but was eventually cancelled. Oh, snap. Essentially, it became a victim of the devastating 2008 financial crash. The idea was loosely used as the premise of Trolls later on, although we can't exactly see how this turned into that, but anyway. Cupcake? Number 14. Guillermo del Toro has become a legend in the movie business, and for good reason. Another one of his projects, Alma, was going to be an animated horror movie when it got picked up by DreamWorks in 2010. But after Rise of the Guardians bombed at the box office, DreamWorks questioned Guillermo del Toro's influence and cancelled it. DreamWorks decided to move away from darker themes entirely after that. You're not still mad about that, are you? Yes. Number 15. Stop motion fans beware, this one might crush you. DreamWorks was working with the famous animation studio Ardman Animation on a claymation movie called Tortoise vs. Hare. It was going to be a twist on the classic tale of the tortoise and the hare. Mysteriously, the movie was never made because the artists at Ardman Animation deemed it a mess of a film and essentially unmakeable. Given Ardman Animation's track record with Chicken Run and Wallace and Gromit, this one really could have been something. Number 16. The last one on our list brings us back to 2007, when DreamWorks got the rights to a screenplay about a gullible man who travels through time in a porta potty. Right off the bat, we're starting to understand why this one didn't make it on the big screen. The same animators of Chicken Little and Open Season were said to work on the movie, which, given the less than impressive box office numbers of those two movies, is probably what flushed this movie's chances right down the toilet. Disney loves a good spin-off series. Doug Days, Cars on the Road, Zootopia Plus. But there's a few franchises you've all been craving to get the slick spin-off treatment. Like what happens when the Incredibles grow up? Or what other emotions exist in the Inside Out universe? Stay tuned for more on that. Number 1. Everyone thought the same thing when The Incredibles 2 came out. I wonder what the family is like 15 years later. That's not the story we got though, as fans are still waiting on that version. The Incredibles has been a beloved franchise for nearly 20 years, and lifelong fans desperately want to see the Parr family dealing with the issues we all went through while growing up. Young love, fitting in, retirement, a spin-off series with the family later in their lives could be so amazing. Number 2. 
What story has more emotional investment than a story about our emotions? And so far we've only looked at joy, sadness, disgust, fear, and anger. How about a different character dealing with admiration, anxiety, boredom, or romance? Disney has announced a sequel in development for the first film, but we think there's even more to mine from this deep franchise. Number 3. As anyone who has spent any time on the internet knows, there's tons to wreck out there. Ralph and Penelope have traveled the internet, and as we all know, it's infinitely vast. These characters can easily go on a journey through many more different parts of the internet in a series. Maybe the pair spend an episode arguing on Reddit with Redditors, and then spend a full episode as pirates pirating content for piratebay.org. And don't pretend you've never heard of that website. We know what you did. Number four. While Treasure Planet wasn't a massive hit, the film has become beloved over the years after a bit of rediscovery. Treasure Planet captured fans' hearts for its unique story spanning space and time. The film is based on the Treasure Island novel, and it manages to blur the line between a few different genres. Jim Hawkins proves himself to be a great adventurer in the film, and if Treasure Planet were to have a series, he could go on even more adventures, with a crew of his own or with friends from the original cast, as well as some run-ins with Long John himself. Jim's adventures could take him to new worlds full of danger, thrill, and the treasures that he seeks. There are few Disney series where space is explored, and a series like this would allow them to return to the world of science fiction. Number 5. This one writes itself. The Madrigal family still has their powers at the end of the first film, and a town full of people to help. As anyone with a big family knows, the drama also never ends. What if the Madrigals are not the only family the Encanto has blessed? We are also not alone with this idea as the creators have expressed that they are also open to a potential Disney Plus series. Director Jared Bush said he would be happy to see a show about any member of the family, and writer Castro Smith shared that Lin-Manuel Miranda was very interested in creating a show about Dolores. This beloved quirky robot would be a perfect friend for the climate crisis facing our world at the moment. The original Wall-E film centered around the titular robot, his romance with fan favorite Eva, and the not-so-evolved humans. The film ended with the previously mentioned humans coming back to the Earth. And wouldn't it be great to see Wall-E work together with his robot pals and human friends to make the world a greener place? Without much else going on, Wall-E is so entertaining to watch, so him traversing our future desolate world would be a blast. Number 7. Instead of heading to Europe this summer, why not spend some time in the lost city of Atlantis? In the animated film Atlantis The Lost Empire, Milo Thatch and his expedition companions discover the lost kingdom of Atlantis. The people and their civilization have been cut off from the rest of the world for a long time and have their unique traditions and technological advancements. Some of this is explored in the second film, Atlantis Milo's Return. But the original film was meant to inspire a full animated television series entitled Team Atlantis, which would have presented the further adventures of its characters. The series would have been akin to an animated steampunk version of The X-Files and feature a crossover with Gargoyles. However, because of the film's underperformance at the box office, the series was not produced. Disney released a direct-to-video sequel titled Atlantis Milo's Return, consisting of three episodes planned for the cancelled series. Number 8. Everybody loves a Sherlock Holmes-based series. Well, how about one where he's a mouse? In another take on the iconic Sherlock Holmes, the Great Mouse Detective was met with great success when it first appeared in theaters. The film is about a mouse named Basil, a great detective working in London who has a worthy adversary in the evil Professor Radigan. There is a reason that mystery stories, Sherlock Holmes or otherwise, perform so well, and it's because audiences love the thrill of discovering what was once unsolved. Basil is another opportunity to do so, as is his world full of animals who need help. The mysteries he solves may be more family friendly than his fictional counterpart, but they're no less thrilling and fun. Number 9. 
Are you old enough to remember this classic Disney film? The story of Robin Hood is a tale as old as time, and its main character is capable of many heroic deeds. The original film tells of Robin Hood when his home in the Sherwood Forest is subjected to an unfair tax and how he leads a lighthearted battle against those responsible. Robin Hood is a sympathetic and generous hero, making fans easily love him as he becomes an outlaw. His motivation for caring for the less fortunate is something that could be built upon, detailing his many adventures as he becomes a hero to every person in Nottingham. Number 10. YouTube audience, meet the Robinsons. Disney's Meet the Robinsons took fans into a world of the future. The main character, a young genius named Lewis, begins his adventure when his latest invention is stolen. He is on the verge of giving up retrieving it when a time traveler named Wilbur appears and takes Lewis into the future. The two boys spend a day in Wilbur's time and learn many secrets while spending time with his family. The film features many eccentric characters with unique personalities. The world has progressed a lot in their time as well, providing the likes of Wilbur, Lewis, and the rest of the family plenty to explore and discover. Number 11. If there's one thing living people are fascinated with, it's the non-living. Coco takes Disney fans into a world often left unexplored, the afterlife. In the film, a young boy named Miguel attempts to undo his family's generational ban on music. His journey takes him to the land of the dead, where he meets a former musician named Hector. The animation in Coco alone is beautiful, but so is the story, as it's a detailed expression of family and loss. But don't you think we could all use a bit more time in the world crafted by this story? Like what's the story behind this guy? Number 12. Longtime Disney fans will recognize these cute crusaders. The rescuers are characters known for their heartwarming and realistic emotions as they aim to help save people who've been abducted. Two mice named Bernard and Bianca go on a journey to save a girl named Penny, who treasure hunters have taken. The story is a classic from Disney and kickstarted more animated projects including a sequel titled The Rescuers Down Under. It is also a fantastic and fun adventure that proves the capabilities of the film's main characters. With two films to their name, Bernard and Bianca are capable of saving more people and creating more stories in a series for sure. Those are all the franchises we believe need a cool spin-off. Any series you think deserves more attention than they're getting? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe for more animated content. And thanks for watching The Things Animated.